is Captain Dirty, and we are back with another Star Citizen Piracy Guide. This one is going to be a bit of a sequel to the previous guide I released, so if you haven't taken a look at that one, now would be a good time to pause this video and go check that one out. Uh, there will be a link down below. Now if you have seen that video, uh, you'll understand the basics of quantum dampening. Um, so, this video is a... Uh, well, there, there are some clips here uh, that I'm going to share with you that are from a recent training exercise that Chaos Squad conducted. The object of this exercise is to use a quantum dampener for uh, three minutes uh, to prevent a trade vessel from escaping. If the trade vessel escapes within three minutes, um, the trade you know, vessel is successful. Uh, if not, then the pirates are successful. In this clip, I will be piloting the C2, and I'm going to use a little bit of a, a tactic here that um, is maybe not very well known, um, but I do think that some people are aware of it, and I think that um, more people should be aware of it. So we're gonna talk about it today, and um, we're mainly gonna look at it from the trader's perspective, but this will be a valuable tool if you are on the piracy side of the coin as well. And I encourage you to stick around to the towards the end um, to see the kind of counterplay to this tactic. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and play this clip here. Um, before I do that, I just wanna set it up. We are, we are at Daymar, uh, area, mining area 141. I'm in a C2. Uh, for this exercise, there's one Mantis pursuing me. And um, so the minimum altitude for me to jump out here is three kilometers above the surface, above the ground level. And um, I think those are the, the major things to point out here. So let's go ahead and play the clip and see what happens. Stranger Daymore 141, got a C2. Pilot's in seat, Captain Dirty. Perfect call. He's on the Seriously move. typing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find out what war he's in. <laughs> it's a low and dirty descent. Target's dampened. Alright, dude. Dirty, do your worst. Alright. Uh, prospects reset over the... Uh... Uh, one four one. Which is where War Dog is currently. Alright, he's headed back to one four one for a green zone's trip. Call. This is tricky. Holding Holding your distance over the green zone can be tricky. He's not damping so, right now, but he's low flying, coming yep. up to a one for one. So that's what you have to acknowledge is that he's going to get out of this. He's going to get out of dampening range, but he's going to be below the quantum ceiling. You have to be aware of your your height. I got him. Right. He's in the green zone. <laughs> Here. Right, looks like he's rocket shipping. Rocket man. Oh, God damn it. oh. <laughs> gotcha! Good one, dude. <laughs> I, was hoping, I was hoping you came a little more at me. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down what's going on in that previous clip. In order to help do that, I've created this slideshow. So let's just take a quick look here and kind of break down what we're looking at. The brown line towards the bottom is going to be your ground level. This black mark in the middle indicates Daymar Mining Area 141. There is an armistice zone. It's pretty tight around that area. That's the yellow circle. The green zone is represented by the green circle. You've got your quantum jump floor at three kilometers. That's the purple line. And the red bubble here is going to be your quantum interdiction bubble, or the dampener range of a two kilometer radius or four kilometer diameter. 
if you're going to have a mantis or a cutlass blue, um, I'll probably be referring to that as the QED ship. Um, that's going to be represented by the red arrow, and this blue wedge here is going to be our trade vessel. So, step one here is to realize that you are in danger. So the first thing that you should be doing when you get back inside your trade ship after you've loaded up all the goods on it is to take a look at your radar and have a look around. Uh, now is a good time to hit tab as well and see if any boxes are appearing above you. If any of those things are happening, um, there should be, uh, you know, your spidey, spidey senses should be going off here. And um, you should be putting the pieces together that you are likely under a uh, pirate attack here. Now, um, if you do have that Cutlass Blue or Mantis directly above you, um, that is a definite sign that piracy is about to happen to you, and you need to plan your escape. So, the other thing to, to just keep in mind here is that uh, you have a plan for when this happens, and the worst thing that you can do is panic. So you're gonna wanna just remain calm and stick to your plan. So, step two, 45 degrees to freedom. You wanna angle off at about 45 degrees uh, as you exit Daymar Binding Area 141. Okay, as you do that, the QED ship is going to angle off in your direction and fly as close to horizontally as possible uh, on an intercept course to meet you as you leave the green zone. So that's step three here. That's what, This is what that looks like. This is the catch. At this point, the QED ship is going to be uh, less than two kilometers away from you, and you're going to be within the QED bubble. So you're going to have a little icon in the upper right-hand corner of your screen pop up, symbolizing that you are currently being interdicted. Now, there's a possibility that a um, inexperienced um, or perhaps just unaware pirate might accidentally fly through the green zone here at this point, and um, doing so is going to immediately disable that quantum dampening field and allow you to escape. So, if you get lucky, there's a chance here that you can just jump right out. Um, <clears throat> it's important that you... Um, well, I would recommend clearing your um, quantum, you know, chart. Cor you know, don't have a set course. Um, just be able to quickly grab a um, quantum point and jump out, you know. Doesn't matter where you go. You just want to get away from here. All right? So it's good if you're prepared for that. So if your pirates slip up here, you're going to have a few seconds where you may be able to spool up and jump away. So be ready for that in case they give you that opportunity. Um, it's pretty likely, though, that um, your um, aware and experienced pirates are not going to drop their quantum dampening bubble at this point. Um, they're going to give the green zone some space, and they're going to come meet you out here as your momentum carries you away from uh, mining area 141. At this point, some of the pirates' friends might be showing up. Um, you are going to ignore them, so we are too. They're not going to appear in any of the other slides. At this point, the QED ship is going to be directly behind you, or maybe just off to the side. Uh, they're going to be trying to stick as close to you as possible and to match your speed. <laughs> There's not much you can do about it at this point. Um, it's just important to like be aware of what's going on. At this point, you've probably traveled about 10 to 15 kilometers away from the green zone or armistice zone, and you're going to want to start transitioning into step 5. That is the slingshot. So you're going to want to spin around as quickly as possible, uh, and aim your ship back towards Daymar Mining Area 141. And uh, as you complete that turn, you're going to want to boost out of it to rapidly change your vector. Now, because you're in a large, slow trade vessel, and the pirates are in small, fast, mostly fighters, they're going to 
probably be able to match your maneuver here. But um, if that uh, pirate is a little heavy on the throttle, there's a, there's a chance that they overshoot you here. So you want to be checking that upper right-hand corner of your screen to see if the quantum interdiction um, is up or down. You may have an opportunity here to escape. However, it's pretty likely here at this point that you are going to need to carry on to the next step. And that's going to be step six. So this is the chase part two. You're just heading straight back to Daymar Mining Area 141. The important thing to notice here is that you're leveling out right uh, right over three kilometers here. Um, you may be able to go a little bit uh, lower if the atmosphere is thinner at the trade location you're operating out of. In this case, uh, we're looking at three kilometers. Now that quantum interdiction ship is going to be right behind you here. Um, there's really nothing much you can do about it at this point. In fact, you want them to be right next to you. So we're just going to encourage them by not really responding or trying to, you know, do any crazy maneuvers. We're just going to go in a nice straight line. So if they fall for it, hook, line, and sinker, you're going to drag the QED ship across the green zone and thereby dropping the quantum dampening field. At this point, you should be angled up towards the closest quantum points that you can find, and you should already be spooling your quantum jump drives. It's also a good idea to, at this point, start to boost in the new direction. Uh, the reason for that is because the QED pilot, if they're aware of what's going on right now, they're going to have to do a few things. First, they're going to have to get away from the green zone, so they're going to have to change course. Um, they then are going to need to reactivate their quantum dampener. While doing so, they're going to try to maintain uh, visual contact with you and try to stay close to you. Um, they may or may not be successful in that, so they may need to reacquire you and then um, close that distance again. So this is really your opportunity to jump out, okay? Uh, the pirate is probably going to be reacting here, but you're not really going to, you know, deal with them in any way. You're just focused on jumping away. Okay, so that's the best case scenario for this tactic for you as an industrialist. Now, let's take a look uh, and see what happens when um, things don't quite work out this way. Okay, we're looking at another clip from the same training session. This time there are going to be multiple... QED ships pursuing me. So we're going to see how, how this goes for us. Prize got a C2 at 141 on Daymar. Pilot is in the seat. And away we go. Fox, if you want to double up with your dampener down, that's that's cool. Okay. Same He's nosing stranger. up. C2's on the move. He's coming up at an angle. He's damping. Watch for the slingshot. Still dampened? Yep. I am also on him at this point, in case Bri loses. Okay. Just make sure your dampener's down, Fox. Yep. Heard. <clears throat> Still got him holding at 1500. All right, David, are you ready to go again? All right, like he's let's turning swap. towards Armistice. Swap to Mimic. I'm he's gonna diving. drop us into the training two real quick. Watch the green zone. We got a uh, Connie Andromeda coming in. That boy, dummy DGA. All right, I'm holding at six. He's diving. See what he does, stranger. Yep, I held turn it, it in, turn it into live if it if he comes in for it. Yeah, he's knows that I'm looking at everybody right now. I think he wants a piece of me, maybe. Yeah, dirty is red. 
legitimately? Oh my god. What does this guy know? C2 is once again dampened. Oh, are we far enough nice. for the merge? Yeah. My tendency would definitely be to just stay above the green ceiling, kind of no matter what. Which yeah, I mean, I did. I didn't break my uh, QED. It's just he uh, he went low and then kept going, so I just held a little bit of altitude and started dropping once we flew over Armistice. Yeah, like horizontally far enough. Yeah. Oop, I've lost him here. Okay. Got him again. Received. Flying back towards Armistice. Looks like he's holding altitude, though. I'm also directly above, approximately. Shit, I've got to gain altitude here. He should be below the jump ceiling. Yeah. He's coming right up into me. He's dampened. Yep, I'm within two k. Oh, I broke. I broke uh, QED. I had to up here. Ah, oh, my God, dude! <laughs> you in a, got in me a by a second. You know, so we're gonna go back to our slideshow here and kind of analyze what just happened in that second clip. So I've taken us back to step six, the chase part two, where we are flying straight back into the green zone. So, um. Instead of doing this, our pirate is going to do this. So this guy pirates, we can tell, because he knows what you're trying to do. He's anticipating the move. He is positioning himself above the green zone, preferably above you as well, or at least out in front of you if that is possible. And he's setting himself up on an intercept path to um, your anticipated location here so that as quickly as possible, he's able to get that quantum dampening field back over you. Now, if this happens from the industrialist perspective, um, you're going to need to rethink your situation. You can attempt to do this strategy again, um, and that is what worked for me in the second clip. I was able to come back in at a different elevation, and uh, either I got lucky or the pirates got a little unlucky. Um, it's, you know, I wasn't um, able to see exactly what happened with the QED ships there, um, but I was able to create enough space um, where I was able to get away. And I think at least one of them clipped their dampener over the green zone and disabled their dampener, okay? So whether or not the dampeners were disabled, I was still able to gain space and uh, make my jump away. Now, if you do this two, three times um, and uh, you know it's just not working out for you, um, you're clearly dealing with some experienced pirates and you're going to need to rethink your next strategies. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. If you found this uh, interesting or informative, please give me a like and a subscribe. I really appreciate it.